Oops. You didn't get one? No. Oh, sorry. Well, I have one I'll send you for, me for memory's sake. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> What's happening? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, man. Just just trying to stay balanced, trying to uh, inspire our people. Um, you know, just for, you know, boys are good. Jessica's good. Everybody's good, man. The fam good. The baby's good. Yeah, everything everything's good. We all healthy. You know, Rocky's right here. She good. Rocky. Hey. We over here working. Nicholas, say hi. Hello. Hey, gang. We just work. We just working. Awesome, man. Well. <laughs> I want to give you your flowers, Dame. You are one of the pi pioneers of how to really get it. You know, when they talk about sticking the, uh, the industry up for what they did to the cold crush, I think you have been a shining example on how to monetize our music and our culture. Um, and I want to take it back, man. You were 16. I think you, you, you famously said you put yourself in school at an early age. Um, God bless your mom. She passed when you were 15 years old. But when did you start getting it and, and put yourself through uh, high school, Dan? Well, yeah, when I was about 16, um, when I was 15, my mom's died. And I got real heavy in the street. And it got critical. You know, people were doing things that I didn't really want to do. And I felt it was a good time to uh, honor my mother's memory by, you know, living and, you know, kind of being great because she worked her whole life to make sure I was. That's right. And I had an opportunity through the boys club, because I used to box at the boys club to go to boarding school, but I just used to get homesick. But, you know, my mom was that had died, so I was like, fuck it. So I, I went to boarding school in Connecticut. And um, then I came back, got my GED, because then, you know, things got hot and heavy in the street. I didn't go back to boarding school for that last year. And then I just invested in myself and the, uh, you know, doing the music thing. That's crazy, man. I know hustling's in your DNA. When when did the streets turn into a passion for music? Did you hear my record, Hustlers in My DNA? Did you hear that record? No. My rock record? No. Wow. Uh, Nicolette, send them over Hustlings in My DNA right now. You know I'm in the rock, my rock band. Yeah, right? for sure. Rock for band. sure. We all follow you, brother. We, oh, we are here. The, the senator, the senator wrote that record. Uh, Eddie Middleton wrote the record "Hustlers in My DNA." He was like saying it on stage, and we turned it into a record. Wow, that's funny you said that. Yeah, but well, it definitely yeah. is. So, so when did when did it turn from hustling to music? I mean, that was still hustling to me. But you know, around you know, if you saw "Paid in Full," you know, I could have actually made that um, movie from my personal experience, and that experience scared me into not wanting to hustle. It wasn't sustainable. And I automatically got into the music business just as a way to be making the same kind of money I was making hustling, but to do it legal. I love it. And people don't really know before you started Rockefeller Records, you were actually managing Jay and you guys did a deal with Payday, right? Yeah, yeah. We, I was managing Jay in the original flavor, you know, with Clark. That's how I met you. With Clark yeah. Kent actually introduced me to you. Yeah. You know, you was uh, in Atlanta and... Uh, he was kind of wild, like I was wild. He was like high yellow nigga wild, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, we, we was uh, we were like kindred spirits in that sense, and um, you know, the rest was history. Yeah, I think.